Now that we have recorded the details of the initial model of the bridge controller system, let's now try to see how we can translate it into the TLA Plus toolbox and how we can use the model checker to verify the properties and see how we can find witnesses when the violation actually occurred for the properties. And I would like to just uh, double check once more about our workspace. Of course, assuming that you already launched your TLA Plus toolbox. And let's go under activities. And then let's go to terminal. And then let me just zoom in quickly so you can actually see that. Let me do one more time. Okay, if you first of all go to the desktop, and you can see there is the workspace that we created in the previous video. And let's now go into the workspace over here. You can see currently it's simply just empty. And you can Imagine that every time we want to add a new specification or module into the workspace, it's going to be a single file with the extension TLA. That's something I'll show to you once we have created our first specification or module. And let's now try to go back to the Spec Explorer on the TLA Plus toolbox over here. The look and feel is kind of similar to the Eclipse. So I presume you're quite familiar with it, but let's see. And by the way, the underlying implementation of the, uh, of the TLA Plus uh, toolbox is actually Java. So not surprisingly, the look and feel is kind of similar. Let's now go to File and go to Open Spec and Add New Spec. And once you play with uh, the tool a little bit more, you'll find that there might be multiple ways for you to create a new spec. But for now, let's go for the most straightforward way. And you have to choose a module file. You can think about the module, uh, module is really like a specification. And module file has the extension .tla, right? And we'll explain what TLA really uh, stands for maybe later in the in the lecture. But so you can browse over here and go under desktop and the workspace. In this case, it's simply just empty. And there are two possible ways why you may want to launch this particular panel for the file browser. Either because you actually want to create a new module file with the TLA plus extension like what I'm doing now or alternatively you may just want to open some existing module file in which case you also have to say open spec and then choose the workspace and then choose some file from the workspace right either way they, you will follow the same path just to remind you right let's give a name so let's say bridge controller model m0 right so you can say bridge and controller, you can put underscore, you can put dash, but let's follow the following convention for the course. Let's say underscore as the uh, separator between the compound words. So bridge controller and then M0. You can see we got underscore in between the compound words, right? So bridge controller M0. And as the exercises for later, you can see your lab manual for more details will let you try to code up some subsequent refinements. Right, and then once you, we are done with the name for the new module, we're gonna say safe, okay? And then you can see everything has been filled up for you. You don't need to worry anymore. Just double check the name. It should be the one you want, right? And then say finish, right? And one thing to note right away, you can see the module over here and it has the name that we just have chosen, bridge controller M0. And then you can see here, it's more like a package structure in Eclipse. We haven't really created any folder. That's something I would like to show to you the correspondence just in case if there might be any uh, confusion, okay? You can see here, I got the terminal over here for, for, uh, for which I'm gonna show you the file structure. And let's see where we are, PWD. We are now under the workspace that we have created. And remember, we just added in the specification, the module, bridge control M0. If we say LS over here, so there have been two things created. Uh, whenever you actually edit in a uh, specification. So one would be the module file, bridge controller m0.tla. So that's the file usually you will have to submit for your lab or for your programming test either way. And this toolbox folder stores more like a meta data kind of stuff, which you don't have to worry too much about. So whenever you, maybe you add a property or you try to do some verification, the results will be stored in this particular folder. You can feel free to uh, explore a little bit what the folder is like 
if we have a chance, we'll try to look at that. Otherwise, it should be straightforward for you to look at. But just remember, what we have created was mainly this particular file. We haven't really created any folder structure inside the workspace. That's really important to note. Don't really get confused by the way they visualize the structure in this under the spec explorer. They simply visualize under the spec explorer for each specification as a folder, as a project. Okay. So bridge controller M0, the name over here corresponds to the module name over here under which we got module, and of course, this will be the module file. That's the .tla, right? So you can see the tab over here, .tla extension. You can also see, if you move your mouse over here, you can also see the name, the full name of the uh, file. And for the models over here, that's something I'll talk about later. But let me give you some very uh, quick distinction about what's, what the difference is between the module and also the model over here. There will only be a single module but you may create or instantiate the module multiple times to create multiple models under the model package. And what's really a model? And if you recall what we said in the lecture briefly, in order to do model checking, your model itself cannot be infinite. So that means you have to draw some boundary about restricting the range of the variables in order for you to really do model checking. Remember, remember model checking is really to explore the graph of your system systematically. But if the graph of your system itself is infinite, then your model checking will never terminate. So the idea would be when we specify our module over here, we don't really have to worry too much about restricting restricting the range of the variable. Sometimes we may have to do a little bit, but you don't have to in general. So without worrying about the range of the variables in the module file, but when we want to do model checking, we will have to create individual models, each one of them with restricted range in order for the model checking process to be visible. Right, guys? It's really important for you to understand this point over here. I'll try to write them down maybe a little bit later, but for now, just remember. Right, let's now go ahead to develop this module file. Later on in the uh, later on in the tutorial series, in other video, I'll talk about how you can create models and check properties. And if you look at the module file, one thing to note, very important, you can see the single dash over here and also the double dash or equal sign over here. Okay, between line one and line four, these area this area over here with all the lines you can expand this area as much as uh, as much as you like this part over here will be the main algorithm or the main specification you have to specify whatever you put in inside line uh, in uh, between line one and also line four whenever uh, whatever you put inside they are going to be checked by the tool somehow I'll show you how anything you put outside for example if you put uh, uh, before over here you put anything here, for example, I would say outside, outside the uh, range uh, of checking, right? Of course, this part over here will, will be the range of checking between the single dash and also double dash. No effects. You can put whatever like, typically some documentation. Okay, and also after this, after you can see outside the range again, outside this, you can also say outside the range of checking and also no effects over here. That's something you want to remember. And Control S to save the file, right? Make sure you save it. And what can be useful for either this area here or this area over here? So in your programming test or sometimes in your lab submission, we may some, we may ask you some questions that require your written answer. So that would not be part of the syntax of the TLA plus, in which case you may have to write some answers typically around here, right? To really give your written uh, test, uh, written question answer. So sometimes or very often, I'll just say sometimes, you may have to supply written answers here for us to grade in, a, uh, in addition to your TLA plus model, okay? And whatever you put between these two lines over here, they will have to be somehow, number one, translated into TLA, I'll show you how, and number two, to be checked later, okay? And 
there's one button click I want to show you right away. That's the button you really want to click as often as you can just to make sure the syntax you have put in this area over here is valid. So that would be if you go to the TLC model checker, uh, sorry, not this one here, you want to go to the file and then you want to say translate plus cal algorithm. Okay, so this will be something I will have to mention to you right away. The way we're going to specify the system for each module, we're going to use a dialect of the TLA plus tool set called PlusCal. Okay, so where can you find more information about it? So in the tutorial video, we try to make it uh, not too long, so we cannot really cover the complete syntax for the PlusCal. But it's like a C-like uh, programming language that can be model check, basically. It's, it's pretty cool. So what I will do is I'll point to you very quickly about the references. So if you go to the uh, home page for the TLA Plus, you can find the link in your lab manual. Go to the home page and then you can go under this learning TLA Plus over here. And you don't need to worry about a TLA Plus video course. If there's any highlight you need to know, I'll let you know. You don't need to study that. Of course, if you really insist in doing some self-study, good for you. Otherwise, it's optional. And what you really need to explore would be some Pascal learning, learning about the Pascal. Uh, I I'm gonna maybe include the links to the manual and also whenever there's any particular syntax you might need, we'll let you know, um, either in the lab manual PDF or maybe uh, in the announcement, we'll remind you. But if you really want to find some complete syntax manual, you should really look for this uh, reference yourself. You might find it useful maybe for your lab exercises, all right? So that's about the reference uh, resources available to you. And let's now try to go under this area over here. We'll start developing. Okay. And let me first of all show to you how you can write comments. You know, in Java, you have different ways, you know, to write either one line comments or multi line comments. Let's see how you can write comments in TLA plus tool. So for single line comments, you have to do backward slash. Oh, maybe backward slash and also a star. So this is how you write a um, single line comments. This is a single line comment. What about multi line comments? Multi line comment goes like this. You got to go for round parentheses and also star. He enter and then star and round parentheses. Right? You can see that they kind of match. And what if we put inside over here? We multi line comments. This is line one comments this is line two comments and of course as i said before another way for you to simply write comments will be to write them outside the range over here right that's another way to do it in which case you don't have to worry about the special symbol over here but if you want to write the comments within this area of the tla uh, like a plus cal algorithm you have to follow this syntax over here right that's really important for you to note Right, I'll try to write comments uh, whenever I need to, but now you know how to do it. Let's now try to write something to set up the context before we write the algorithm. So these will be the typical things you will have to write. Number one, you want to import the relevant libraries and the keyword to import in TLA syntax will be extends, all capitals. By the way, it's case sensitive, so it should be matching case. Okay, extends, and so there are four libraries uh, or modules that we need to import. One will be integers, it should be spelled verbatim, and then naturals. And these two are rather straightforward, right? Natural number, which we just reviewed in the previous video, and also integers, including negative. And sequences. For sequences, I would say always uh, put it down. Sometimes we may need to do some print statements, which we may not show in the current tutorial series. We'll show that to you maybe a little bit later. Okay, but sequences always remember to, to include it in, and also TLC. So TLC over here is actually very important for you to check for properties. Okay, temporal logic checker. So that'll be for the import, and. This line here, of course, you don't need to memorize. So either we'll provide this line to you, or maybe you can put some cheat sheets, maybe for your programming test. Either way, I'll confirm with you. After the import, the next one will be constant and also their associated axioms. For the constant, it's going to be a list of comma-separated 
identifiers, names. So let's say how we can declare them in the TLA plus tool. So constant, all in capitals. Okay, just constant without S, just singular. And constant, and then let's say we declare two of them. So that'll be D and also another one called the bound. I'll show you exactly how to use this bound in a moment. But for now, let's see, uh, let's just have uh, maybe some comments over here just to document its purpose over here. So the bound will be, and remember how we do the comments over here. I'll just put in one line, but it's more like a multi-line construct. Doesn't really matter. You can work out what style works for you. So the bounce denotes the length of interleaving of events. And I'll try to visualize this a bit once we get to using the bounce in the actual algorithm. We'll get there. So that'll be the constant. What about the associated axiom? Let's say for the bound, it will simply leave it implicit. So later on, when we create or instantiate the models, we can give it some specific value. But what about a D? Let's recall from our initial model about what D should be constrained. So if you look at this model here, let me just put it here so I don't really need to bring it back. So we can always be reminded the model that we are trying to build in the TLA+. So D has a single axiom. It should be a natural number, including the possibility of zero. Let's say if you just want to encode this, then all you got to do is you're going to say axiom over here, the keyword. Just spell it out. And notice that if you put S at the end, the highlight will disappear. That means axioms is not a uh, valid keyword in TLA plus tool. You need to be singular axiom without S, right? Be careful about the spelling. It's uh, you got to spell verbatim and also it's case sensitive, all capitals. If you just want to put a single axiom, it will be just a single Boolean expression. In that case, you can say D, the constant is a member of natural number. So for this one here, how do we say that? Let me put this one for you and I'll show you how you can extend it if you wish to. So we can say D, the constant is a member of, you would say forward slash, sorry, backward slash in. So this will be actually the membership operator you have to know in a TLA plus, okay? And I actually back in Roden, I believe this uh, is, a bit, is a, a little, it's a little bit different symbol that you have to write, but just forget about what you actually learned in, in about uh, in Roden, it's a different tool. So this is what you gotta do. Forward slash, sorry, backward slash and the IN, in, standing for the me uh, set membership. And then it should be a member of the set of natural number. So the set of, the set of natural number corresponding to N over here will be NAT, capitalized N-A-T, right? So that's the first axiom we can write. And there's a single one, so there's no need to put any conjunction. However, let's say we want to say not only that D is a natural number, but also D should not be equal to zero, meaning that D should be strictly larger than zero. How do we say that? We want to say D is also larger than zero, but somehow we want to combine these two Boolean expressions together, the first one here and also the second one over here by using conjunction. Logic wise, you will have to say conjunction. If you remember the conjunction symbol, something like that, right? That's exactly what you have to type in TLA plus forward slash and backward slash to uh, to mimic, you know, the uh, um, mathematical symbol for logical conjunction. But in TLA plus, it's a little bit weird about how they put conjunction together. So rather than having the conjunction symbol right in the middle, you should think about if you really want to conjoin more than one co uh, conditions together, you should put the conjunction symbol in front of every one of them. Let me show to you how you can write it. So let's say I want these two conditions. Let me put it into different lines. That would be one thing you can do. And also let me just put some space over here. So they are indented uh, to the same level. So I want to say the conjunction over here and also conjunction over here. So that's, oh, sorry, that's uh, this one here and this one here. And let me just make sure the indentation is actually right. So this is what you will have to write. And let's take a look at exactly how to understand the symbols over here. You want to really understand, we actually got the logical conjunction 
and also the ASCII symbol that you have to type. You want to make sure you understand how to distinguish between them. Let's take a look at the iPad over here. Okay. For now, let me move the initial model out. Okay, over here, let me have a new page over here and to explain. Think about in logic on paper. Whenever you got predicate P and predicate Q, if you want to say conjunction, let's say P, Q, and R. Let's say you got P and also Q and R. You will say P and Q and R. And that's how you inline them horizontally. But if you want to inline them vertically, you will say P, possibly and Q and R. Right? You can see with three predicate there's there are only two conjunctions right that's how it works in logic and also on paper nothing wrong with it but now the way tla plus require to requires you to write a syntax will be something to say if you got p q and r to be put in conjunction if you got three predicates over here involved two or uh, three operands then you got three conjunction symbol as well okay that's what you got to do for what it's worth i'm going to write down the rule for you uh, in just a moment. So what we're going to say is, let's say TLA plus symbol, right? What we're going to say is P, Q, and also R. And you have to put a conjunction symbol forward slash, backward slash, forward slash, backward slash, forward slash, backward slash. All right. And we, let me just give you the rule and then we'll go back. So P, Q, and R. So these are called operands. Right? And of course, conjunction over here are the operators. And here, the number of conjunction symbol you have to put on the paper or in math. So the number of operators will be equal to the number of operands minus one. Here, you got one, two, and three operands. You got two operators, right? Very straightforward. And for this one here, what will be the rule? over here so it will be the number of operators in this case conjunction will be equal to just the number of operands without the minus one all right that's something might be new to you but you just get to get used to it if you didn't really follow this particular rule you're gonna get errors on the ide right that's something you don't want to have especially during your programming test okay let's now go back over here and so that's the uh, axiom. And so you can think about these two parts together constitute the context of our algorithm. So the context here is similar to the context we spoke about in 3342 in the rodent machine, but just want to draw some connection, All right? So now we got import, we got constant, and also we got axiom. One thing you may want to try right away, okay? Remember I mentioned that we are using the plus cal dialects uh, C-like syntax for specifying algorithm, which we're going to do very soon. So if you go under file, and then if you go translate Pascal algorithm, you can click on that right away to see what this will do. This will be some icon you have to click whenever you put some updates into your algorithm. But now for the context, let's say if, if it might generate anything, if I click on that, you will see that nothing will change is simply because we haven't specified any algorithm just yet, but it may not hurt to adjust, uh, just to maybe just for you to really see what might be the effects when you click on the gen, uh, when you click on the generates, when you click on the translate plus count algorithm at any point in your development to, uh, process, right? So before you actually put any code or any construct for the algorithm, you wouldn't have any effects on translate. Uh, plus cal algorithm. That's something to know. But we're going to try this icon again later once we develop some algorithm. All right. So this that will be very short uh, walkthrough about what you can do, like a pre-processing thing, uh, item you can actually write before you develop the actual algorithm. Okay. And uh, in the next video, we're going to see how you can develop the actual algorithm.